Hello, it's been a while, but here I am, back. Right, I'm going to get straight on with it. The Bible is all true. Oh, is that such a big deal? <laughs> well, you know, even before I would have said the beginning bit was like a creation myth story. But there's truth in it. And particularly for this video, this is about the days of Noah when the great flood and how that is true and happened 12,000 years ago wiping out the Atlantean civilization and that that's going to happen again in about a hundred years from now and this civilization will be wiped out and we'll have to start all over again which I actually relish I mean there's the possibility that we within the next hundred years manage to uh, sort of extend the civilization beyond earth um, therefore keeping the civilization um, but I don't think we will. I don't think we'll manage it. Not entirely. We may uh, keep something sort of so there's a clue for the next time. And perhaps the previous civilization also succeeded in that. Um, you know, or at least getting a, a few sort of steps forward from the beginning, like. We had the Sumerian knowledge, which came from the Atlantean period, and therefore that was like a head start. That's the word I was looking for. So, Genesis 1 1. In the beginning of creation, when God made heaven and earth, the earth was without form and void, with darkness over the face of the abyss and a mighty wind that swept over the surface of the waters. Well, you see, I, that's amazing. That's amazing. Anyway, I won't keep interjecting. So, the, we're talking about sort of over 130 million years ago. The Earth was, a, was without form and void with darkness over the face of the abyss and a mighty wind that swept over the surface of the waters. So, you know, the earth was there and you need to know the earth expansion theory for this because more than 130 million years ago the earth was a third of the size that it is now. Um, roughly. And what started to happen was an expansion and if it was a third of the size and the, all the ocean water that we've got now was on the earth then then it would have been entirely covered with water as it just says there over the surface of the waters God said let there be light and there was light and God saw, saw that the light was good now whether this is sort of it, then even further back in the evolution of this galaxy which if you know my theory the best ex ex the best existence theory on the planet um, this is God's our mother and father's galaxy the Milky Way and so the other galaxies are God's kin and they're all in their mother and father's universe and uh, within the Milky Way galaxy, at the centre of all the galaxies now in this universe, there is a black hole. And in that black hole is a portal to uh, a lower universe, a newer universe, which is our mother and father's universe. And all of us have forming galaxies in that universe right now. But right now, those galaxies are probably not... Um, lit up that much. I don't know, to be honest, fully what's going on. But we're sort of 10 billion years behind 
this universe. So whatever the galaxies were like 10 billion years ago is what our galaxies are like. Right, anyway, back to our mother and father's galaxy, the Milky Way. So whether this bit here where there's suddenly light when the sun turned on, right? Who knows? Who knows what the sun was like over 130 million years ago? Or even, you know, a billion years ago? All right. I, I, I realise we've got off to a bad start here, right, reading this. Obviously, I'm not going to read the whole lot, because I can't make a 17-hour video. God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and he separated light from darkness. See, that could be when the earth started spinning, okay? He called the light day and the darkness night, so evening came and morning came, right. He made the vaults. Right, so here, here's where I think the expansion began. God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So if you think, if the earth was covered in water, further the size, covered in water, you know, the atmosphere and the water, you know, there'd be lots of clouds, lots of weather, you know, it would almost be a blend, right? There's no sort of separation in a sense. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it. And so it was. And God called the vault heaven. Evening came and morning came the second day. This is a bit, that didn't sound like, yeah, here we go. God said, let the waters under heaven be gathered into one place so that dry land may appear. And so it was. God called the dry land earth and the gathering of the waters he called seas. So they haven't said there that, um, uh, you know, the earth expanded and therefore land arose. But th this is what it's talking about, the, the creation of land. So if the earth expands, is covered with water, the earth expands, therefore the surface area increases. And at those expansion bits... They're probably deeper and, you know, you start to get the appearance of land, right? So it's sort of, oh, it says there that the, the appearance of land will happen and the earth expansion theory would lead to an appearance of land happening. Right, and so then we've got the, you know, producing growth and the trees and, because obviously without land you couldn't have trees that bear fruit as we type of seaweed or something anyway so this is you know this is this is here revealing a, a, a truth here that this is what's happened in the history of the earth uh right and then it creates all the creatures da, 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 da. Ba -bum, ba -bum. this so this is the story of the making of heaven and earth and when they were created, okay? So all that happened. So then we get to the Garden of Eden. So this is, you know, as we all know if we've read the Bible, this, you know, it's like another creation story or something. This is different. When the Lord God, and they suddenly start calling God the Lord God, so it's different, it's a different, uh, derived from a different Aramaic word. When the Lord God made earth and heaven, there was neither shrub nor plant growing wild upon the earth, because the Lord God had sent no rain on the earth, nor was there any man to till the ground. So this does sound like a different creation story, and I just thought now this could be the beginning of another epoch, and let's just say that an epoch is about 12,000 years. So where you have this period where a period of of what they call, um, you know, peace, rest for the earth, uh, where, you know, some sort of civilization can have enough sort of quiet time, not volcanoes, ice ages, floods and all sorts, um, where they can actually do something. So if that was sort of like at the beginning of one of these, 
uh, nor was there any man to till the ground. A flood used to rise out of the earth and water. Hang on. A flood used used to write out or mist or mist. A flood or mist used to rise out of the earth and water all the surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed a man. It's a bit confusing from the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Thus the man became a living creature. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, away to the east. Now you see, this This is now my theory that this is um, during the Atlantean period, and that this Lord God was um, a high up Atlantean who probably thought he was God and um, created you know did DNA stuff I know big stretch here <laughs> but look you know planted a garden in Eden away to the east and this is this is this is that sort of eye of the Atlantean city Atlantis where that central bit that Garden of Eden, this is what I think. Uh, plant the gun away. And there he put the man whom he informed. The Lord God made trees spring from the ground, all trees pleasant to look at and good for food. And in the middle of the garden he set the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. There was a river flowing from Eden. <laughs> My theory is beginning to sort of tear apart as I actually start reading it. But because, you know, this is so wordy and actually this um yeah you know, when I read the Old Testament it wasn't this version, it was the King James, but uh, this is probably more accurate uh to to the translation. Anyway, um, what am I saying at this Adam and Eve bit? So, <clears throat> well, there's lots of clues really to why, you know, we've got this Adam and Eve bit, um, you know, and God doesn't seem like the normal God that we'd expect. You know, God seems pretty strict, pretty sort of, I don't know, like... Not particularly nice, not particularly loving God. Um, you know, so there's this punishment that he puts on them and stuff like that. And, you know, why if it was in this time of Atlantan and they messing with DNA to so, sort of try and create a sort of a cool sort of human and um, and sort of the way they sort of brought it up to be pure and you know not want to wear clothes and stuff like that and have these you know have these rules you know why why put temptation right there <laughs> um what am i talking about really i'm not talking about yeah so it just doesn't seem like it, it seems a bit weird so, you know, you can assume it's just a made-up story or or we can put this sort of uh, filter on it and say, you know, is this, is this something that's actually happening? Because, you know, as we get into it and, and Adam and Eve have children and then, uh, you know, we've got this fallout between Cain and Abel um and then Cain Cain gets sent off to an to another area where there's where there's other people because he's if you know afraid that these other people will kill him and so he's given the mark of Cain so that you know anyone who hurts him will be avenged sevenfold <laughs> that was green eyes and uh you know so we got this whole story developing where there's you know this was supposed to be sort of right at the very beginning where the the true god was creating mankind because if we 
you know, because I didn't read it all, back in Genesis chapter 1, um, it says, you know, God made man um, in his and her image, he made the male and female in his and her image, and all was good. You know, we had all was good bit. But, you know, you read Genesis 2 and you start having to sort of come up with conclusions that men, we, mankind has been born with sin within and, you know, error and it's all Eve's fault. No wonder we haven't got a chance, stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. But this has impacted our epoch because um, of all this blue eyes and green eyes stuff. Like the Vikings, when they left Sweden, Norway and Denmark in, you know, 800 AD, have spread throughout the world and impacted the world massively. I mean... What CEO of a very rich company hasn't got blue eyes? What royal member hasn't got blue eyes? Well, I think we've got a prime minister with brown eyes at the moment. Anyway. So, Cain gets, uh, Cain gets sent off to the land of Nod. And, you know, he found a wife. Then Cain lay in with his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch. Cain was then building a city which he named Enoch after his son, Enoch Binoch, begot Irad, Irad begot Mehujal. Well, I don't read those bits, they're pretty boring. So, we got, you know, we got Cain's descendants, and then, um, after Abel died, uh, Adam and Eve have another son called Seth, and apparently they go on to have other children as well, but then you've got all Seth's descendants, and, uh, Enoch, you've got two Enochs, you've got Enoch, son of Cain, and he's supposed to have started dabbling with wizardry and stuff like this. So I think all this is occurring, and sorry, this actually, I finally get into one of my major points. All of this is occurring before the flood of Noah, before the collapse of the Atlantean period. So, more than 12,000 years ago. Which I think then puts a whole different sort of look on this. And, that, you know, you've got then the other Enoch, who's the seventh in line from Adam, um, walks with God. And uh, eventually God whips him up. Now I'd say this isn't the real God. This isn't the the god who is the galaxy, the Milky Way. This this was the Atlantean, um, Atlantean uh, high up person who considers himself a god, or at least a god to these beings that they perhaps DNA created, or you know. Um, <clears throat> Created with some sort of idea of of having some sort of really perfect race or something, you know. Let's say you know they felt they'd become impure or something. I don't know. But it's where I actually think we get the ideas for gods from, because we it was there then, like, and that's continued. And then the Egyptians had their gods, and you know that's came through the through the uh the great flood the information still contained i mean the scandinavian gods the viking gods 
almost depict um, the island of Atlantis and the blue eye. They had this, the, the blue eye, which was like from above, that city of Atlantis looked like a blue eye on the sort of eastern arm of this island that would have been because um, Africa's risen northwest Africa has actually risen some 1300 uh, meters or something yeah I think so that's what it is and so 12,000 years ago it was lower so sea would you know more islandy which is what I think this is thoroughly fascinating and when Jesus talks about you know they're asking what what will it be like in the end times so they're talking about this end times like they know there's going to be these end times and so um, he's saying it would be like in the days of Noah so in the days of Noah is just before the end times of the previous epoch. Am I making sense? So we're already in Genesis 6, we're already talking about Noah builds an ark. This is the story of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, the one blameless man of his time. He walked with God and he had three sons. Da, 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 da. So in a sense, here's an attempt from the Atlantean leaders who know this is coming and uh, actually get Noah to build an ark so again not the I'd say not the god of the universe but this Atlantean so then they so then the, the flood comes it's the uh, micronova event the uh, uh, the big, the big burp that the sun does, and will fill the area between the sun and the earth and the other planets with dust for you know, however long, a few years maybe, and um, and afterwards, a civilization like the, the one we've got today won't be able to, won't function anymore. We're so dependent upon certain things that, yeah, like the, if the numbers are alive today, and if it happens today, you know what I mean? It'd be pandemonium. Huge, huge numbers of people would die. But some will survive. And then we'll do it all over again. And this is, you know, this book here show, is the story from before, from before the epoch up till Noah. And then afterwards, when we, when we start talking about Abraham, and because, I mean, they go through lots of uh, generations, but a, I'd say a good period of time has elapsed here and when we start talking about Abraham um, so there must there must be a good period where not a lot was happening um, you know the, the knowledge that the Sumerians seem to continue you know unless we're, we're, we're wrong but we're not wrong because if we look back there's actual geological evidence for a, um, a, a sudden cooling of the planet. And I think the whole period from the sudden cooling of the planet right down to ice age conditions, back up to, to proper warming conditions, it's about 500 years in total. And um, so, so it's an ice age plunged into an ice age for, yeah, I think maybe it is a couple of hundred years, something like that, and then sudden warming again. Say so sudden, you know, maybe it is over a period of a hundred years that it, it warmed back up. 
and plunged into cold over about a hundred years. So, yeah, so then once we've got to Abraham, then we're in this, then we're in this epoch, and there's so much in that book that has proven, got geological evidence for, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah, there's geological evidence that that occurred. There's um, the, even the parting of the Red Sea, there's potential evidence that that can occur. So I think, yeah, it's an amazing way to look at it, you know, that there's, there's a whole book of truth here, maybe with some bits put into it that make it, you know, maybe there's lies woven in there as well, but, you know, it's there, it could also be fact, fact, that shows us many things, like the way our planet has been formed, to the periods of time where we have stability, to the design of the whole thing that we're here to learn, um, make mistakes and learn. And all the time we're doing that, we're increasing our capacity to love, and uh, it's all, it's all good, it's all good. So, cheers for listening. Um, maybe it was interesting. <laughs> anyway. Ciao, for now.